In this video, we're going to talk about quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral is simply a four-sided figure. And it turns out that the interior angles of a four-sided figure adds up to 360. So in this example, angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D adds up to 360 degrees. Now, there are certain types of quadrilaterals that have specific names. This particular quadrilateral is the trapezoid. In this figure, these two lines are parallel. Now, if you have an isosceles trapezoid, these two sides are congruent. So make sure you're aware of that. In addition, the angles opposite to those two sides are congruent if it's an isosceles trapezoid. The next shape that you need to be familiar with is the parallelogram, which looks like this. In the parallelogram, these two lines are parallel, and these two lines are also parallel. In addition to being parallel, the opposite sides are congruent. So those sides are congruent, and these two sides are congruent as well. So that's the parallelogram. Keyword, parallel. Opposite sides are parallel to each other. The next figure that you need to know is the rectangle. In a rectangle, all four angles are congruent. They're all right angles, 90 degrees. 90 times 4 is 360. Opposite sides are congruent. These two sides are equal to each other. And the opposite sides are parallel as well. So the rectangle is like a parallelogram, but the angles are 90. So these two sides are parallel to each other, and the top and bottom line are parallel to each other. So that's the rectangle. The next shape that you need to be familiar with is the rhombus. In a rhombus, all four sides are congruent to each other. This might not be drawn to scale, but it's supposed to be like that. Let me draw a better picture. So all four sides are congruent. And the diagonals bisect each other at right angles. So each of these angles are right angles. The square is similar to a rhombus and a rectangle, but also different from each. Like a rectangle, all four angles of a square are 90 degrees. And like a rhombus, all four sides are congruent. So in a square, everything is basically equal to each other. And like a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel to each other. So each of these shapes are known as quadrilaterals. Now let's work on some math problems. So let's say if we have this four-sided quadrilateral. Let's say this is x, and this angle is 58 degrees. And this one is 73. And this angle is 117 degrees. Go ahead and find the value of x. Now, if you recall, the sum of all the interior angles of a quadrilateral, or four-sided figure, adds up to 360. So that means 58 plus 73 plus 117 plus x, all four angles, have to add up to 360. If we add 58 and 73, that's 131. Next, if we add 131 plus 117, that's 248. So 248 plus x is equal to 360. To find the value of x, we need to subtract both sides by 248. So 360 minus 248, that's about 112. So that's how you could find the missing angle in a quadrilateral. As long as you keep in mind that all four angles have to add up to 360, 
it's going to be a piece of cake to solve these types of problems. Now let's work on another example. Let's call this angle A, B, C, and D. So angle A is equal to 5x plus 10. Angle B is 10x minus 30. Angle C is 95 degrees. And angle D is 4x. Go ahead and find the measure of angle A. Feel free to pause the video and work on this example. So we know that all four angles, A plus B plus C plus D, has to add up to 360. Angle A is 5x plus 10. Angle B is 10x minus 30. Angle C is 95. Angle D is 4x. All of that has to add up to 360. So what we need to do is combine like terms. 5x plus 10x is 15x. 15x plus 4x, that's 19x. Negative 30 plus 95, or 95 minus 30, that's 65. 65 plus 10 is 75. So 19x plus 75 is equal to 360. Now let's subtract both sides by 75. Three sixty minus seventy five is two eighty five. And two eighty five divided by nineteen will give us an x value of fifteen. So now that we have the value of x, we could find any angle that we want to find. So let's go ahead and find angle A. So angle A is five x plus ten. And let's replace x with fifteen. So it's 5 times 15 plus 10. 5 times 15 is 75. 75 plus 10 is 85. So that's the final answer. It's 85 degrees. That's the measure of angle A. Now I want to show you one of my algebra courses that might be useful to you if you ever need it. So go to udemy.com. Now, in the search box, just type in algebra, and it should come up. So it's the one with the image with the black background. So if you select that option, and if you decide to go to course content, you can see what's in uh, this particular course. So the first section, basic arithmetic, for those of you who want to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it has a, a video quiz at the end. It's a multiple choice video quiz. You can pause it, work on the problems, and see the solutions. It covers long division, multiplying two large numbers, and things like that. The next tutorial is on fractions. Add in, subtract in fractions, multiply and divide in fractions, convert in fractions into decimals, and so forth. So. You can also take a look at that. Next, solve the linear equations, which we covered. And just more examples if you need more help with that. The next topic, order of operations, which is also useful. Uh, graph in linear equations. You need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to be familiar with the slope intercept form, standard form, and just how to tell if lines are parallel, perpendicular, and so forth. And there's a quiz that uh, goes with that as well. The next topic is on inequalities and absolute value expressions, which are also seen in a typical algebra course. And then we have polynomials, and that's a, a long section. And then factoring, you just that's another topic you need to master. And then system of equations. You can solve it by elimination, substitution. There's also word problems as well. Sometimes you got to solve equations with three variables, x, y, and z. So that could be helpful. Next, quadratic equations, how to use a quadratic formula, how to graph them, how to convert between standard and vertex form. And then you have rational expressions and radical expressions, solving radical equations, simplifying it, things like that. And every section has a quiz. 
So you can always review what you've learned if you have a test the next day. So here we have complex imaginary numbers. You need to know how to simplify those. Exponential functions, logs. I have a lot of videos on logs. And then this is just functions in general. The vertical line tests, horizontal line tests, how to tell for functions even or odd. And then conic sections. Graph in circles, hyperbolas, ellipses, parabolas, and things like that. There's two video quizzes because it's actually a long section. And finally, arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. So that's my algebra course if you want to take a look at it. And uh, let me know what you think.